This show is brought to you by Slice on Broadway. Supporting Pittsburgh podcasting with the perfect pepperoni pizza, SliceOnBroadway.com. And listeners like you, support this show at Patreon.com slash AwesomeCast. Sidekick Media Services. We are your sidekick in business for social media, video production, and more. Find out more at SidekickMediaServices.com. Ladies and gentlemen, from wonderful Beachview neighborhood of Pittsburgh, PA, this is the awesome cast from Sorgatron Media Studios, where we get geeky and uh, talk technology and talk about some awesome things from people in Pittsburgh doing tech. This is Mike Sorgat, Sorgatron on the Twitter, video podcaster and such uh, uh, person doing things right here on the boulevard, on the Broadway Avenue, I'm sorry, on the, well, I want to say boulevard, um, right here in our new studio, second week, and we're getting going with things. First of all, joining us from Studio C, it was too awesome for him to join us two weeks in a row. He is John Chichilla at Chilla on the Twitter. Uh, you got your guru over at Big Bank International Esquire. Hey, how's it going today? Awesome, awesome. Looking I missed, good. I missed the couch. I, I'm, I'm in protest because there's no brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> Still, we okay. We need to put things on the wall. I'm aware of this. We need new lighting. We need all kinds Bricks. of things set up. Uh, so, but at least the audio works, and you're sounding great coming from Studio C. So we're making sure week by week that bits work here, and we'll, your, the wall is gonna. I, the wall's happening. I, that, okay, I, the wall's gonna happen in some shape or form. So, so you can protest for at least a couple more weeks here, Chilla. Sounds good. Awesome. Also with us, like I said, uh, we, we have endeavored to have as many in-studio guests as possible between this, the awesome cast and the Wrestling Mayhem show. And that starts this week, this Tuesday night. Uh, uh, Brian Crawford joins us from the River's Edge. If you join us on the live stream, we're listening to you as we look on the view of, of, of Broadway Avenue here in Beachview. Uh, thank you for joining us. Yeah, see, uh, the only reason why I'm here is I was told that the brick wall was moving God. to this space. Jeez. Jeez. <laughs> well, we'll have to have another parade and walk it up <laughs> Hampshire <laughs> Avenue again like we did that big purple couch. And if you haven't caught that, there's images and in, in over on uh, uh, Sorgatron Media's Facebook page or my cover photo, my nice Abbey Road uh, uh, remake <laughs> that we did across the, the tracks here on Broadway. Uh, but anyways, uh, thank you so much for joining us. Uh, of course, River Ed- River's Edge PGH.com, where we're uh, providing content for you guys yeah, and, and we're doing a lot of work together and really excited to see, like, and then, you know, we'll kind of talk a little bit, a little bit later about, you know, what, what's new for you guys, because you guys have had a pretty big move and everything. So. Yeah, we both moved into amazing new spaces. Yes, absolutely. I got to check it out a little bit ago, but we'll talk about that a little later in the show. Um, of course, you can check out everything at awesomecast.com. You can and subscribe to the show on iTunes, Stitcher, Spreaker, iHeartRadio, and of course, video versions on the YouTube and the uh, Facebook uh, um, uh, versions of uh, Awesome Cast. And you can check us out every Tuesday. Uh, the shortcut to wherever we might be streaming, just in case we're doing something a little bit different, is live.awesomecast.net. And we do that at 7 p.m. Eastern time every Tuesday. We're also, uh, you know, thank you to our streaming partners like The River's Edge. We're, we're moving. I, I guess that, that's an announcement yeah. we can throw out there. We're, we're moving. Uh, so we're, what's going on over there as far as that goes? Yeah, so we're going to be rearranging the entire schedule. We have some new shows coming out. And then we're moving some shows to where we think they're going to uh, be better be, be more successful and be better reached so we're thinking a later start time for a lot of the shows and then also we're moving a lot of our programs to the weekend such as awesome cast so i think you know there's nothing more awesome about awesome than technology and saturdays so we thought we would just bring them together awesome uh so thank you. Mm-hmm. thank you so much for that and of course we're also streaming over our friends at 405 media.com uh, so we're, I think, I think daily at 9 a.m. Eastern or Pacific time, which is noon Eastern time. I got to do the math every week. So wait, you're technically competing with yourself I'm on com- Saturday. You kind of <laughs> actually, I guess we are. Right? Yeah. Well, no, 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 no. It's, it's five days a week. Oh, Busi- five days a week. Okay. Business days. So there we go. They're running us and, but they run mayhem show seven days a week. I think at midnight or 9 p.m. Pacific time. It's always uh, fun when you're in two places at once. Yeah, exactly. Um, it, it's weird. Well, even here, I'm, we had River's Edge going and I heard my commercial for awesome cats yeah. here in the in the studio i'm just like 
what am I doing over there? I'm not, I'm not behind a mic. Uh, but no, it's a lot of fun. And thank you to everybody helping us kind of spread the awesome cast love all over the place between River's Edge, between 405 and anywhere else that people are sharing us, listening to us on whatever podcast or video service that you may be finding us. We kind of want to be um, accessible to all, I guess, uh, through, through all these kinds of things. And of course, thank you so much to our Patreon supporters. We did record a state of the show. Did that go out yesterday? Um, it w- will be soon, if not, to our uh, five dollar coffee club members. Right now, a uh, big thanks to Matt Weller there on the other end of Pennsylvania. Matt underscore Weller on the Twitter and our fan of the show, uh, Michael Fedor at Mike Fedor Show uh, on the Twitter as well. Uh, thank you so much to those guys for supporting this show, supporting podcasting. Um, and like I said, that's it's one of the reasons that we feel confident in moving into a space that has rent and everything else that goes along with it rather than doing a podcast in a basement for like we have for the last 10 10 years basically so um you're part of our growth and you guys can support the shows as well at patreon.com slash awesome uh like i said we we, we kind of we're trying to get out there and do some more special stuff for you guys and if, especially if you're local we're going to do some more stuff here in the studio um as well and as as it is we invite everybody uh on those facebook events that we're putting up on the facebook page let us know if you want to come in and sit in on, on a recording of the awesome cast and uh, so we can put a chair out for you and uh, we can hang out and you can be part of the awesome cast in that way uh so let's get into our awesome <laughs> things of the week mr chilla what do you got lined up here so, so I, don't, I don't know how many people out there are familiar with uh, apple's test flight application um test flight is for those of us who live in the future um, as large, you do, as you do. Yeah, as, 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 yes, definitely, as I do. Um, test flight allows companies to give beta versions of their application out. Um, you, they do have to register your iTunes account as one of the, the testers, um, and you have to accept the invitation. Every time they release a beta, um, you then get to install that application. Depending on the application, it may overwrite and upgrade your existing application. A lot of times it actually runs as a second version of the app on the phone. Um, Like I said, this is probably something that a lot of people haven't gotten a lot of wind of because the old limitation that Apple imposed was only 2000 participants or iTunes accounts could participate in a test flight beta. So, It was kind of limiting when you think of the big name applications like your um, Evernote or your your Microsoft with Skype. Um, They only get to select 2,000 people, right? And that could potentially also be internal employees, depending on how they decide to kind of run their their betas, whether whether they do internal releases in addition to test flight or whatnot. Um, Apple recently upped that number to 10,000 iTunes accounts. Um, So what that means for those of us who like to test things is we will probably be hearing from a lot of companies now, hey, would you like to test um, the the pre-releases of applications? And like I said, a lot of times you don't have to worry um, that it's going to break your de- you, you definitely don't have to worry it's going to break your device like an i like a being an ios beta tester you also um typically the majority of the time for for the test flights i'm in um it's not destructive to the existing application so you, if, if something's not working for you you can always just close the app and run the current store version um for the ones that do upgrade the existing you can always remove it and just reinstall from the typical app store they, Apple with this does a really good job of uh, giving you notifications to say, hey, there's a new test slate version available, go upgrade it. It doesn't auto update like the typical app store. So there's a little more um, involvement from the end user. But what I see with companies that do the test flight build, they're people that the people that are involved are very engaged and and usually there's you no know, forms where you can go give feedback, you can go prioritize capability you want to see in the application, things of that nature. So going from 2,000 to 10,000 people, that just means more feedback. That means bugs getting crushed quicker. Um, 
I'm interested to see, you know, how Slack handles this. Um, Cause if you look at Slack, they, they do a really good job of outlining their bug fixes um, in, in, in kind of a humorous way, but definitely engaging their, their crowd. Um, so this is something that definitely as, as a person that likes to live in the future, definitely I, I look forward to more companies kind of looking at this one quick note too. One of the things Android does, Android does the same thing, and there's a the same kind of beta test enrollment. The thing that's tough on Android is if they're using the official Android way of doing the beta, um, you can't see really what the current version is in the App Store. It's not broken out the same way as two separate apps. You have a different tab in the App Store that shows, you know, hey, the beta is available. But you really can't tell when that version goes g generally available or production unless you're following the company on a different site or actually log into Chrome on, a, on another device that's not associated with your, your account. Like I have to constantly go into incognito mode in, in Chrome and check the app store to see, well, did they release? Is the current, is the current release the, still the beta or is it the final release? So it's a, it's a little tougher to do on the Android side. I'm, I'm hoping Android o brings more to this. Um, the only thing I don't know about from the Android side is if they even have a limit of the number of beta testers you can have, um, as as Apple has, has prior cap of two thousand, new ten thousand. I don't know of a of a Google limitation on that side. That's awesome. Hey, anything that makes it a little better before it gets out into the wild, right? Right, and and like I said, I, I think it really gives. The people that that want to contribute feedback, not just from a, hey, this new feature doesn't broke, doesn't work, or this feature works, but it broke something else that I use, and here's what it is, and automatically up, uploading logs and all kinds of information and bug tracking. Um, I, I feel like it betters the product from a, hey, this is really cool, but I think it should do A, B, and C in addition to what you made it do. Awesome. Awesome. So that's the uh, Apple test flight system getting uh, getting pretty pretty uh, spread out there. Uh, we got another we got a gadget from Brian here yes. uh, for your awesome thing of the week. You brought a little show and tell here. I did. So uh, who here remembers going to the drive-in? Oh, I just did uh, about a, two weeks ago. Did you? So there's <laughs> still a drive-in oh, in, in. Okay. Can I have region? side mini awesome thing of yeah, forever? Yeah, is yeah, dependable yeah. drive-in here in Pittsburgh? It's out past the airport. It's okay. four screens. They have mini golf, and uh, it's like I think they have some nice digital projectors for what they're doing out wow. there. Wow. Their website is wonderfully ninety still. Uh, so there's that as most good drive-ins are, they still have that old style, right? Right. To like the, the animated GIF dancing hot dog or, or, or something going on. Um, and you're sitting there and you're watching this. And then if you're on the right screen, there are airplanes taking off behind the screen from the runway. Cause you're right beside oh, the runway. Incredible. You go up like business, uh, 376 and it's like right off, uh, past, uh, university Boulevard. Uh, but anyways, so yes, Go check it out. Go support them. They're awesome, and it's like eight bucks for a movie or for two movies. For, yeah, for for them, don't you like after the first movie's over? Don't you just turn around your car or something in a different movie? There's different movies on different screens. I think you could, <laughs> but I think there's people watching out that you're not doing that. But it's really not. I feel like you could definitely kind of get away because there's oh, like so the, there is a spot so where there's like th there's like three screens like right next to each other basically that you could just kind of turn around and be like okay and flip the channel <laughs> flip the radio channel and you're you're watching something else. So yeah. So sorry. Uh, That's incredible. For the diversion. That is yeah. that is an awesome thing. I, I will not deny that. Yeah. Dependable driving, and um, I think it's technically fin Finley, PA, or something. Okay, up past up in Moon Township. That's incredible. Well, if you are too lazy to drive all the way out uh, 376 or you just want to uh, crack open a drink and sit on your porch, uh, this here is not an external hard drive. It is not. It a, looks like it. It seriously looks, looks like it. I yeah, thought... It looks exactly like an external hard drive. Yeah. But no, this is actually an LED projector. Mm -hmm. And as you can see. It's actually, in some ways, smaller than my cell phone. Wow. Uh, holding it up next to my small phone. Uh, yeah, my cell phone. And it's HDMI. It has an HDMI input, so it does have HDMI capacity. And it just charges. It's It's got a rechargeable battery, just like your phone. 
And this little thing can really work really anywhere. You don't even need a screen. I've just done it right on the wall. Even with the lights on, you can actually still watch the projector. It's an LED projector. And it comes with everything that you need. It comes with a little HDMI cord. It comes with a charging cord. And one of the cool things that it does come with is an adapter that has a micro USB. So you can attach your HDMI cord to the micro USB and you can then plug that into your phone and then watch movies or Netflix or something like that anywhere you want. So you can go to the park, pull open the projector, uh, maybe spray it onto the the wall of the pavilion or something like that. So you can go in nature and watch TV. And I'm somebody who who grew up with a glider, and I would sit outside and watch watch Jean Luc Picard in in Star Trek going across the galaxy from the glider with this little mini TV. And now I can do the same thing again with this little projector. Only it's going to be a better video quality. That's awesome. And uh, yeah, and it comes with everything. I think it even has the audio built in, but you can also you can, yeah, it does have a little bit of audio built in, but you can also uh, attach audio to it to uh, put it out into real speakers. But it's great because you can just take it anywhere. We, we've used it at Millville Music Festival meetings for uh, notes and things like that because you could just connect it right to your computer. Mm-hmm. But, uh, but really, I mean, the video quality is, is really good. And it says on here it's good for one to two people. But I know for the Music Fest, we had an entire room of like 12 people looking at notes on this thing. Now, it was a little harder to read with the notes because you were in a big, big thing. But for like a movie, mm-hmm. it's no worse quality than than most of maybe maybe not your drive-in theater, right, but right, most right, drive-in right. theaters. Oh yeah, let me give you that. Oh. <laughs> also, we had the lights on during those meetings. We did, yeah. So, we had lights on and as it well. Was, it was still. You could still we see could it. Read yeah, it. it was great. And, and we had a screen for those meetings, but you don't need a screen. I've tested it out at my house, where I, you know, I could just adjust the focus, and I can see the text from the Mirror. I, is, I believe is the name of the company. It's a weird name, but it is made by Texas Instruments, and it was only like a hundred bucks. So it's a cheap projector as bad. well. That's not bad yeah. at all. To be able to put it in your pocket and go. I, I can see that like being packed in for traveling, Chilla. Like like when you're in the, in the hotel room and you want to watch a thing, but I I, I kind of get tired of watching things on the um, you know, watching things on, on, on that little screen or setting up a laptop or something or, and, you know, not interfacing with that, you know, really crappy TV they usually have in the hotels. Um, it, it, it's also weird that, that the, the more you pay for the hotel, it seems like the worse the TV is. Yeah. Uh, but, but, you know, you can connect that, throw it on a wall and you're, you're good to go and you can, you feel like you're actually, you know, watching something. It's, it's it good. even has a little uh, screw in for an, a, a tripod as Ooh. well. So you could actually, like, if you have a swimming pool or a hot tub, you could just hook it up on a tripod and watch a, a TV show while you're, nice. you're hanging out at the pool. handy since I'm usually on traveling for video, so yeah. I definitely have a tripod. It's <laughs> wonderful. Really, <laughs> it's, great. I mean, this is such a cool thing. And uh, I know... I know the guy, when I went into... I actually got this at Best Buy, which was a good deal for, for Best Buy. And even the guy in there, he said, you know, he uses it, lights on, watches full movies, uh, no issue. He was actually... And that was a customer who was in to buy a second one because he was so impressed with the first one. That's awesome. So, That's awesome. It, it, I, my instant thought is, oh, I could plug a Chromecast into this or an Apple TV at the same time and then wirelessly display pretty much anything I want. I don't yeah. even have to tether tether my phone to it so mm-hmm. it's definitely kind of a nice travel companion from from a size perspective when you think of the size of like a chromecast or or, or an apple tv I, I, it definitely coupled together would be would be extremely nice i could even see this for not just traveling in your hotel room but if you're you're presenting somewhere or something like PodCamp, right mm-hmm. um you could turn you could quickly turn any room into a presentation room which is great if you, you know, as we do pop up sessions at PodCamp, which dates will be announced very soon, I'm sure. Uh, you know, how many people, how many times, Chile, have we seen people say, "Oh, we do a breakout session in like the lobby," right? Right. And and that's exactly something that you know they can they can kind of I, do a little bit more with. I, I apologize because I missed what was the price and what was the display resolution. Uh, the price itself was only around a hundred dollars, and uh, yeah, it was really affordable. 
And the resolution, I'm actually like trying 720p to... 720p or 1080? I think it's 720. Okay, that's, I mean, that's, that's definitely what I'm thinking. good enough for, for... Yeah, HDMI, let's see. I'm pretty sure it is 720, but I'm just not positive. That's, that's, that's fine enough for a little $100 unit like that. Yeah, yeah I mean, it's good. specifically, you mentioned Chromecast, uh, Chilla. It specifically mentions here uh, Roku, basically, or it actually says Chromecast here, too. So, yeah, they're, they're basically selling it as... As that kind of an option where you could uh, you could use th that stuff with this, so they're really marketing f it for uh, that ability. It doesn't really say on the box; it just says HDMI. But uh, yeah, I got it. Like I said, I got it at Best Buy for like a really great price, and I was I've just been thrilled with it. It's really been, I mean, for for me, you know, 720 is perfectly fine. So I've been really happy with the product. That's awesome. I might be I might be in the market for that one actually. So, um, well, well, guys, I I got my game on this weekend. Um, Replay FX, you know, we're we're big fans of it. Chilla, I ran into you down down there as well, of course, uh, which was awesome. And uh, but I I did something a little different because I kind of wanted to make sure. I actually initially said I marked out four days and says I, I I'm going to hang out at Replay. I'm going to get I'm going to try to over dose on video games for four days right uh because i mean this is a big deal and then i just you know kind of a little mini staycation kind of thing and what i actually ended up doing was signing up the volunteer which was like the best decision possible because i signed up of course for the console lounge so i'm hanging around you know fixing nintendos and 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 helping uh eight-year-olds find super mario brothers uh which was a, a pretty cool experience and uh got to work the dr mario uh competition also participated um, just helping out with the organization and that. Um, I gotta definitely recommend that next year for anybody interested because they like one, you get to be there, right? You get to be around everything and, and be a part of it. Um, you know, you, you get you get passes for, you know, a couple of days depending on how many hours you're gonna work. And uh and 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 it gives you you know, kind of a reason to 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 do that. Uh and there's I didn't even look at like what you get for being a volunteer. And they had a really generous swag bag. Um, that had like you know a, a, a replay fx uh, uh you know water bottle and and you know pens and glasses and and a bunch of raffle tickets and 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 things like that so uh definitely recommend that but in general the replay fx experience is just great uh for those unfamiliar and, and you can check out on our awesome chat uh you know, let's look at replay effects on um awesomecast.com and you'll find our interview with uh them down at their their warehouse down in carnegie actually and actually our oh, friends, i've been there you've That's been there nice. it's, a, it's a great it's a great spot uh but uh also if you want to check out a little bit more if you go to replay fx's facebook page they have some live streams that uh, our friend ryan hackery and uh buzzy and who's going to be here next week and uh and and brian Cron uh um, Brian Conway is, was actually um, um, a part of it and uh, talking to a lot of people um, um, there. So you can kind of see a little bit of behind the scenes and interviews of people there. But they basically fill the convention center, the David Lawrence uh, uh, Convention Center with video games. Pinball, arcade games, um, you know, there's bands playing. I, I was really into on Friday night, uh, there was a, a Bit Brigade. I didn't realize what they were doing. I was hearing them as I was playing video games a few rows away, halfway across the venue. And uh, it, it, and then I realized I came over and they were playing DuckTales. I'm like, why are they playing DuckTales? They're playing the NES DuckTales game. Nice. And what they were doing is not just playing video game music. They had somebody sitting there playing the game doing speed runs hmm. of the game. The guy sat there and beat DuckTales in like 10 minutes as they did the music to the levels in sync as you went to a different level they're playing the music for that level then they went and went for a break for a little bit so i was like all right i'm gonna come back and they said they were gonna do mega man 2 which everybody you know Mega man 2 is like one of the biggest music favorite games out there right and uh they did a speed run of mega man 2 now i played i've done my time on mega man 2 let's put it this way <laughs> and he was doing stuff that i didn't even think of like using platforms to get across you know certain areas and not doing the jump puzzles and all that kind of stuff and 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 you know again playing the music as they're going um talk to the one guy afterwards and he's like he's like yeah he's he's getting so fast with this it's pissing us off because we can't really get into the song for the level or the boss battle or anything like that because he's beating them in like three seconds as they're just starting the boss battle song right 
and like he's getting that good at it. Uh, but but it was a really cool experience, and, and you know it, it's you know you go and you're just like okay, I need to support these guys, <laughs> and you go buy a T-shirt. You know like that that's how awesome they impressed me. So we're like really fortunate here in in Pittsburgh because we have that we have we have the Carnegie, and then we also have Pinball Perfection, which is out near my way. Like there, there are mm. so many places, and then there's also a place in Lawrenceville that has pinball. Lawrenceville. There's the uh, I always have to bring out the PA uh, Coin Op Museum yeah. that's up there in Ambridge that, that, that we've talked with. It's a great. It's, it's basically so many places. It's the place when when I want that kind of experience outside of replay. Play FX. I'm going to go up to Ambridge, drop down 20 bucks, and go play play up there. Uh, Producer Missy. Oh, I would just actually wanted to jump back to the mirror. Yes, or whatever you pronounce that. Uh, Their website says that the native resolution is 640 by 360, but the max input resolution is 1080p. Wow, that's nice. Hmm. That's that's nice. That's good. That, That 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 covers all the bases there, as far as I'm concerned. So, um, but. Back to replay. No, really great. You know, finding games. Um, our friend Chris Whitlatch on this show, uh, he he kept telling me. You know, we were tweeting back and forth. He's like, "Gotta play Battletoads. Gotta get that Battletoads on, right?" And I've never played much of the arcade Battletoads. And I sat there, and you know, everything's set on free play. So you're like, you know, if there's something you dumped your quarters in, like me with Ninja Turtles or The Simpsons or something like that, or Road Blasters, you can just sit there and play. And you'll probably get through the game if you just sit there for the, you know, however long, 10 minutes, 20 minutes, half an hour that, it's, that it takes to do that. And I, and I played through Battletoads and I'm just like, oh, I didn't realize how violent this was going to be because I've always played Battletoads on a Nintendo system where they always cut that stuff out. Right. You know, and uh, but uh, but but no, it was really cool to like experience stuff like that. They have a lot of really interesting. They had a big row of like rhythm and music games. Um, a game I, I'll never pronounce, but it was like a giant cube and it was to a beat and, and basically it was just a bunch of squares mm-hmm. and to the beat, they kept popping up and he had hit all the squares and it was the funnest thing and hard as hell. Huh. So, um, definitely, definitely recommend that. And, uh, but no, check out the videos over there. Um, I, I, I of course have. Uh, a lot of stuff from my few days there as well that I threw up on Instagram and then uh, uh, by way of that over on um, on Facebook. There's a couple. There's somebody. Um, this person is, I think, powering the pinball machine with wow. a um, with a with a bicycle. I feel like you would lose your concentration. That that's impressive. Um, yeah, exactly. Like a lot of challenge stuff. Or like right beside them is actually a pinball machine. You play backwards. You're standing up behind it. Huh. And, uh, and, 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 you know, you can look down from up top, uh, to it, but I didn't get a real good picture of that, but they do have one on there on their Instagram. Um, the biggest thing for me was I was playing tournaments. I was participating in a few tournaments, right? Um, like Poyo Poyo Tetris, Dr. Mario. No, I'm not any good at it, but, um, I, I just wanted to you know, get that experience. And it, it's, it's fun to play against different people. At one point I was playing against the guy that runs the Tetris tournament in Portland. Oh, wow. In Dr. Mario, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and, uh, and, and I felt, I felt good about how much I held my own. Obviously I didn't, I didn't win a lot, but, <laughs> but, but still like being able to actually hang in there a little bit with these guys or this one guy came from California for the Dr. Mario tournament. That's awesome. Wow. That's so crazy. So that, that's, that, that, you know, that, that's the kind of stuff that this is attracting. Not to mention the insanity that is the Pinburg Papa tournament that is like nationally yes. renowned, world renowned, and had like, I think it was $120. And, and they usually have, I think it said like 500 people uh, at those things. So it was a really good time. Chilla, you were there too. What was your experience like? Uh, it's phenomenal. I mean, I'll definitely, I, I was there last year. I was there this year. I'll be going back again next year. Um, I'm huge on Operation Wolf, so I spent a lot of time over there. Um, there's a game, and the name escapes me. It's uh, it's something Blasters, and they had they actually had two versions. They had the upright console, and then they actually had one where you kind of road blasters. Road yes. blasters, yeah, yeah. Um, so so I actually, unfortunately, I couldn't get on the the one where you actually sit in kind of like a cockpit type thing. Um, that was pretty cool. There was a lot of kids in there. Um, I was impressed with, um, the the thing I'm always impressed with, you never have to wait too long to play a game. Um, people are extremely polite. There's a lot of, 
uh, kids, like I saw uh, parents with kind of like a step, a portable step stool that was made out of like colla- collapsible plastic. Um, so the kids could get up on the, on the older consoles. Yeah. They Did actually, the- they actually provide those. At, oh, the, at, at the information desk yeah oh, okay and then did you see and, and maybe you mentioned it the horseshoe game i didn't so there was a game and i, I tried to actually look on the 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 case the, the encasement that this that the, the console was on um or the upright was on because i was trying to find like a copyright date or like a when this was created date it looked like it was something that I don't even know out of the fifties, maybe sixties. It was probably about four feet tall, probably about three feet wide and probably about a foot and a half deep. Um, And all it was, was a metal disc mounted on the front of the machine, um, probably at about waist height for, for, for most adults. And then there were small lights that lit up and they Mm -hmm. were, um, there were horseshoe overlays cut into the wood with some plastic over the top of it. And you literally spun the disc and depending on how hard or how soft you, you spun it, your horseshoe would kind of like blink very slowly uh, across the lights. And if you spun it too, too soft, it would stop short. And it's not like it stopped short. Like we would think and like fell to the fall to the ground, right? These are just lights behind cutouts. So it would just stop in like midair. If you, you spun it too hard, it would actually bounce into the horseshoe pit and bounce out. Um, it was a very, very simplistic um, game, uh, definitely from back in the day. Um, but something I, I, I never saw without a person there just playing it trying it out so that's what i love too is there's there's games you were were probably long before our times even some 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 of the older people's times um that you get to see and you get to kind of live live and and then test out there was i i love seeing the kids that were getting into stuff there was a kid on on thursday that that came up to us and he had a list (laughs) and he was asking if we had certain games and they were all nintendo games nes games like this like eight year old kid was nice. like, you know, like, do you have this? Like he had like, I want to play this game and this game and this game and this game. Right. Like he's like, he had a mission <laughs> that was incredible. <laughs> is, 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 it's great because that's really coming back. The, the old uh, culture of the old gaming systems. They even have now like little systems where you can get SNES and NES in the same system. And you could buy games from each system and play them through one device, mm-hmm. which is pretty cool. So uh, yeah, I mean, I, I love things like this because I, I'm an old. I like the old games. I, the new games are a little too real for me sometimes. Mm-hmm. I, sometimes when I play a video game, I just want it to to look like a video game, yeah. and I love that about the old games. It has like a, a feel and the yeah. and the MIDI music just kind of like it's like you know that you're in video game world. It, it's it's like you this is what it's supposed to be. But there's some fantastic stuff too. Um, our friends are looking for a group. Uh, they're over here in Brookline, of course. They kind of have a video game lounge kind of thing uh, going on where you can go play Xbox One and PlayStation cool. and Nintendo Switch and new PC games and everything. I kind of want to go down there and just play with some of those games that I saw. And in fact, I have a wish list of about three games I, I need to buy soon that are like indie games that I saw people people playing, right? And and like they, it was great because they, they even had, they had like 40 computers hooked up and I sat down and played like the original unreal tournament for a little bit right so you know i mean it, it was pretty good or, or this game which i think is called gang beast and uh but they had these tournaments going on on this giant screen um oh, that's nintendo cool. arms super super uh street fighter 5 um you know and and this was always looked like this if you're on the video screen it was just you know 30 people plus watching people play games on this thing. Um, like I say I was played like Poyo Poyo Tetris. I didn't know that was a thing, but uh, but it's great. The, 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 oh, go ahead, Missy. All of this video game chat mm-hmm. is making me really hungry. Yes, yes, exactly. Uh, <laughs> Chill, you got a point there, and I want to tell people how they can fix that 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 thing. The one thing that surprised me was the the international games in multiple foreign languages. So mm. we actually. Uh, that's the one thing if if they're taking any feedback is you know having someone around there to help you navigate to get the game started yes because a couple of those it took us quite some time but they were fun and there mm-hmm. there was long lines it, and, and i'm not sure if it was because people were having problems with them but it was super cool to see games that were never even released in the united states 
Awesome. And hey, we want to give a shout out to um, our, our friends at Slice on Broadway. Um, feeding. I, I know we're, we have a lot of competition here because we do have the taco stand across the street and everything. I know, I know Brian was slice, checking that. But nothing beats Slice. I mean, you had the comparison here. Yeah, know. well, you know, I like the tacos and uh, I just woke up, so I planned on having that and then having some Slice to there kind of go. mellow things out. There you go. There you go. All, <laughs> it's a, that is a world, that's a very worldly taste um <laughs> that you have there yes. but, hey thanks to our friends at slice on broadway they're supporting the show they're right up broadway they're on broadway we're podcasts on broadway uh, it kind of connects uh they've been supporting pittsburgh podcasting with a perfect pepperoni and pizza for a good long time i stopped in i uh, grabbed our, our our podcast pizza for the night talked wrestling because i was wearing a current angle shirt from last night's monday night raw um good people supporting us great to be uh supporting those guys in the community and and being a part of that as well right here on the tracks in beachview the last place where the t regularly runs as we many times as we uh, are sitting here it's it's rolling by us uh uh, you know what's the with people uh gawking at whatever the heck we're doing in here um but uh check them out there as well as in carnegie pa down on main street and over on pnc park home of the pittsburgh pirates and let them know the awesome cast sent you okay let's get to we have a couple of things here to chat about if my doc loads in a moment that I'm stalling for. Chilla, do you have a story in the meantime while I'm trying to get this thing to work? Oh, yeah, what's up? I've I've got the doc working over here. Okay. Um, Chris Whitlatch, since we were talking about video games before we split to talk about some pizza, uh, he made a comment about from Pong to Pokemon, explore 50 years of electronic gaming at the Bullock Museum exhibit in Austin. And that was actually opened uh, this, this past weekend. It looked like July 29th. But... Um, it was in Austin, so it's it's a nice big city there down in Austin, and video games of all all sorts. So it's you know from Pong to Pokemon. So it chronicles everything from you know the the beginning of video games with, with Pong to everything that's current. Uh, admission range from nine dollars to thirteen dollars, and it includes. Entrance to all special exhibits. So if you happen to be at the Bullock Texas State History Museum in Austin, you might want to go check in that out. Um, so basically, uh, the article says it's a look at the past 50 years of gaming history through original artifacts. And it's just it's got a bunch of cool, cool things. Um, speaking of Pong, do they happen to have anything like that? Like, what was the oldest thing that you saw? Oh, I saw a Pong machine. Oh, you did see a Pong <laughs> like machine. I, did. I saw a Pong machine. Uh, somebody had a Tandy. Uh, I saw a lot of impressive, impressive old hardware. The, uh, yeah, there was a Tandy set up in the console, console lounge. or something else that took floppies in the console lounge, too. There was, um, there were a few Vectrix systems, the the vector based graphics home systems that had their own monitor and everything. By the way, they look incredible. Like, still, they're impressive. And these things are probably from the 70s, early 80s, hmm. maybe. Um, there was actually this guy, this guy was there last year too, but I really got to dive into what he was doing. The, the, I, I don't know what this guy's from. I, like, I don't, he's not part of replay effects or anything like that, but he sets up this long table of, of console games and everything. And, and, and the, the booth is things you probably never played. Right, there's the Sonic R, the the Sonic Racing game for the Sega Saturn, right? That nobody who had a chance to play that. I, I happen to have a copy because I'm a weird collector. <laughs> um, Tempest 2000 or Tempest, I don't know, 2000, but it's Tempest on the Atari Jaguar, and I played Tempest on like Microsoft Arcade on my Windows 3.1 machine, right? Um, yeah, they he had a 3D TV hooked up to the PlayStation 3 and a pinball game. <laughs> like Zen pinball, just you know, like you would get on your phone, um, and they were doing that. And he and and he was over chatting in the console lounge about how, um, you know, he has the 3D glasses. He has a setup like it's the TV that if you just like don't recycle those 3D glasses from a movie, you got glasses now for it. <laughs> Hey, hey, you know, not like the special ones that you need to buy for them. Um, you know, stuff like that. You know, uh, you know, of course the the old pinballs, the old like like click. Uh, score pinballs they have there too uh, are pretty incredible. But what about you, Chilla? What's the oldest thing you saw? Like probably that horseshoe game. Yeah, I'm thinking that horseshoe game, and I couldn't really put a put a date around it. Along with, I'm guessing probably like the Tandy. And was was there a Commodore 
64 floating around there? I mean, those three uh, were probably not. I don't know if there was a working Commodore, but there were a lot of like those flashback machines um, mm-hmm. out. So, and there were definitely several Commodore of those, but those are the ones that you can pick up at like, you know, Dollar General for like 40 bucks or something that has a bunch of games on it. So, and th- there was, a, a, again, it's, it's hard to date some of these, these machines, but like there was a, there was a pinball machine in the center area that was a Spider-Man pinball machine, mm. and it looked it looked like it dated back to, like the old, original comic book days. So it it had and it I mean the wood the wood casing on it was was had definitely seen its day. So I'm guessing it was around for for quite some time. Yeah. Well. You, uh, yeah. You look at those. You can look at those pinball machines in in kind of like the last row over in the pinball area i mean some of those machines had to be much older than me absolutely since i didn't actually get a chance to check this out uh did they have the oregon trail did it, um i'm sure it was on one of those floppy machines okay because I, I did see some of the floppy yeah, machines like, that's what like i was asking ma- math blasters and stuff like that because you, you know? realize that that's where you would have lost me yeah 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 dig that like, there wasn't like an apple 2e that i'm aware of there okay. so but there was definitely a lot of really really cool stuff brandon submitted a facebook a facebook video woodworking tips a very articulated stormtrooper helmet it's pretty oh, wow. awesome so check that thing out i mean if you guys are on the video if you're on our facebook group you can check this out it's very like i said it's very articulated it's not just like the flat it's like beautiful you know white you know kind of thing but it's a it, it looks like something that man that looks like something that just goes in your home like that that should be on the banister when it welcomes you, you know. Like this is the first thing you see. So, yeah, I really like that. That's cool. That's as awesome. a, as a long time Star Wars fan, that is uh, definitely something I would put. It's uh and the and, and the Facebook page is wor- woodworking tips. So, you know, that's there you go. That should be easy to find. So, uh, from there, Chilla, you have any stories you want to hit up on? Ch- Chilla. We lost the chiller. Uh, we have lost the chiller. What's up, Missy? Well, you work on, on getting him in there. How about you? Well, I actually do, do you have some fun stuff. Yeah, I wanted to actually touch base on uh, going back to looking for group. You mentioned people who were sitting around watching video games, and I had listened to an interesting interview uh, with one of the guys who runs the Overwatch game. And he's actually he actually thinks that Overwatch will actually overtake the NFL in viewers wow. as people who are just watching other people game. And they are actually building their own stadiums for people to go watch Overwatch. Yeah. There's uh, one here I'm, I'm looking at through Engadget.com. They have one stadium that seats up to 250 fans to come in and watch other people play this game. But uh, this guy very firmly believes that Overwatch could actually overtake the NFL in ratings and be like the next big thing selling sponsorships and everything else and amazingly i have not really dived into overwatch but it's the thing that everybody else does so i feel like again we should go we should have a night where all of us have all of us uh overwatch noobs should go looking for a group and see what the fuss is about yeah right? i still don't even don't even know what it is i just know every time i see someone like write overwatch in all caps because they're like really excited i type underwatch i don't know what overwatch is but it just seems like something to it just kind of annoys all the I, 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 people. I, I've never personally played it, but when it's when it's on the esports on like I think it's like Friday nights or Saturday nights, I definitely stop flipping the channels and sit there and probably watch for for five to ten minutes. What, what's interesting about it? What's entertaining? Because I I just have never been into to watching other people game, but but mm. you've done it, so I'm just wondering like what what's the draw? Kind of, kind of before you get it, I feel like I got a taste of it mm-hmm. at this event. Okay. By ha- watching these tournaments with a group of people, so you kind of understand the vibe okay. going into it. Um, so I think that has opened me up to maybe watching that happen. A no, bit yeah, more, yeah. I'm not you know? not trying to asking from a judgmental standpoint. I'm no, just no, no, very no, curious. Yeah, because, but, uh, but I'm saying like I'm yeah. just saying that that's that's kind of gateway me a little bit. Okay. This so kind of I had this weekend. I guess that kind of makes sense. It's kind of like people who because uh, a lot of people have a hard time watching hockey, for example, on TV because it's so fast paced. But then once they uh, watch hockey in person then it's like they, they get hooked on TV. So you, you say say it's kind of like that similar sensation? Yeah, kind of like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Chilla, you were saying? 
I was going to say that the, the, the two things, the esports, the, the Overwatch games, and then have you watched drone racing? <laughs> no, I didn't know this was a thing. <laughs> oh, yes. So, so drone racing, um, they actually use VR headsets. Oh, jeez. <laughs> um, and the, and a, so you have a person with kind of like VR goggles on, and they can see real time, like real, real time out of the front of the drone. And then they have remote controls, and it's a, a um, it's a race through kind of like an op- a very very large building warehouse size obstacle course. Jeez the the drone racing league dot com I just found on on Google. Oh yeah, it's that's it. That's ridiculous. Oh, it's awesome. wow! Just watch the video that loads when you open up the site. It's incredible. That's I am crazy. definitely subscribing to your newsletter right now. <laughs> <laughs> that's happening uh but uh <laughs> that's great uh so, wow that's i feel like that's vomit inducing but i guess that's part <laughs> of the challenge right i mean you really do have to have a little bit of constitution in order to to uh survive this a little bit right yeah because and when you think about it, like from a it's not like they're sitting way up high or they can see all the way around the the racetrack so you definitely have to be kind of wirelessly in the drone of the cockpit that's great that's awesome um <laughs> if you, if you want to sponsor a person I'll, I'll be i'll be happy to uh start start training by the way brian i'm looking at the chat room and uh and, and, and I, I think you said older people uh when we were talking about older video games uh earlier Oh, did I? I think so. Yeah. I think so. <laughs> so well, I'm you, an older person too. I had, uh, you know, I was one of those spoiled kids. I had SNES and Sega Genesis. There you go. There you so, go. Bring so it I'm back with around. You. I'm, I'm one of the old guys. <laughs> That's great. Some great conversation on there. Um, by the way, oh, I just saw something of the week from uh, our friend Alex Cars out there in California is Adobe Audition, a uh, new auditing tool of choice, and but it, it's it's definitely worthwhile, and and you can get with the Adobe creative suite these days it's if you want to kind of if you need an upgrade from the free audacity that i recommend for everybody to get started with um it's got some really nicer tools to to you know work on your audio so uh definitely highly highly recommend it although there are plenty of things on our network that still use audacity Mm -hmm. so i mean that's that's it works if you know how to get around it don't need any more of the bells and whistles it's it's great but if you want to take it i will say that Adobe Audition is very, very nice. It's very easy to do a lot of uh, quick edits if you're in absolutely, a pinch. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, it, it just kind of seems to behave the way you think it should, I guess, <laughs> uh, in comparison to to what Audacity seems to do. But you know, it's one of those I've kind of worked with the better tool, and then going back to Audacity, Audacity is kind of kind of tough to do. Mm-hmm. So there's that. Um, yeah, absolutely um let's see anything else we want to touch on real big here chilla uh um, real quick real quick kind of on that if you go to the last link in mm-hmm. the doc i'm kind of bouncing off the idea of, of okay i saw this uh, bouncing around what is this about so, so avid who makes uh pro um editing uh, video editing tools um that that a lot of your your mainstream media and a lot of movies use obviously there's definitely the premiere pro and final cut pro um x out there um this is another tool that, that's well known ar- around the uh around the industry mm-hmm. um it, it definitely had a barrier at, to entry with the cost um they've actually made a a new free version called media composer first um, it mirrors a lot of what the expensive software does, um, but obviously cuts down on some of the bells and whistles. So you have five organizational bins mm. for you, but you could do four track video editing eight tr- with eight tracks of audio, mm. um, but it will only export into QuickTime H.264 or DNX HD, which is Avid's format mm-hmm. um, at 1080p, almost 60 frames per second. So it's not going to do 4K. But it will take in any type of most of the major footage. So 4K and Ultra HD is allowed. Um, I thought it was interesting from I, I really like to look at some of these free tools because I'm sure much like yourself, I get asked, you know, how can I do this for free or, yeah, or, or cheap. At, at a very minimal cost? Right. Like, um, like even the the cheap 
uh, Final Cut Pro, you know, uh, $300 is a little bit much for a lot of people or, or $50 yeah, a month to get the Adobe. Mac, right? Yeah, and you have to have a Mac, so there's that. Actually, the first uh, non-linear uh, editor that I got to use was a consumer Avid. It was, I think it was called Avid Express, and they had it in my high school. And that's, that's how I got into editing in that, in that manner. Right. Uh, back in like 99, mm-hmm. I think. Uh, so it, it's, it's cool to see them coming coming back around to that. And if it's a good gateway for them, because it, it does feel like, I mean, obviously there's a lot going on in, in, in Hollywood using, you know, Avid. But I feel like Final Cut and Premiere have been kind of um, uh, inching in there a little bit. Right. Uh, so so good to see them kind of gateway people in for this because Av has never really been a, pu- a consumer facing company. It's been a, a professional facing company. Uh, so it still looks super complicated compared to the, the other tools. <laughs> yeah, like yeah, I, I, I mean, I work in this stuff and I'm looking at this. I'm like, mm, I don't know about that. <laughs> so, but it's everything. I mean, there's like with the audio programs, right? Like you kind of have to wrap your head around how that works, right? Mm-hmm. Like I know how Photoshop works and then I tried GIMP since it's free and it doesn't work the way I expect it because I know how Photoshop works, right? Sure. Well, that's like, you know, when I use Audition, it's much easier for me to edit something down than Audacity. Right. Like, it's just like I do it in half the time because I'm trying to relearn everything with Audacity and, and it's not as, as easy to move things around. So you're you're banging your head against the, the desk. Alex brought up uh, the Audacity or the Audition in, in our Slack as well. Yeah. And I says, dude, I'm so old school. I was using Audition when it was cool at it before Adobe bought them. Uh-huh. <laughs> so <laughs> uh, I would which was like 12 years ago, you know, so, but you know, yeah, yeah, it's good to see people still using it. So, um, awesome. So that's Avid. What, what's the official media composer first? Yes. It's called. So awesome. Go check it out. If you're uh, looking to dive into a little bit of video editing, don't come to me for advice. Cause I don't know how to use that I, one. At sir, all. I'm, I'm, I'm sure there's 18,000 YouTube videos. Oh, absolutely. And, absolutely. And that's even how, I mean, there's, there's some things I, I, that weren't a hundred percent apparent with like a right click or, or whatnot um, in, in final cut where a, a very quick YouTube search of how to add a vignette or how to crop or blur portions of video. Cause I was doing something for work and I needed to blur needed to get the point across, but I couldn't show any of the content on the screen that I had recorded. So it's things like that. I mean, and that there was, I think, quickly 40 videos that popped back that i could have used to, to figure it out so we didn't have that back in the day that's for sure so yeah all right well hey on that note uh missy is there anything we want to touch base with uh before we head out of here and events or anything or chat room or you're looking at me and uh i really happen to like that uh, alex Carr says drone racing sounds like pod racing finally being brought to life absolutely <laughs> absolutely uh so we'll see I want to give that a like and <laughs> hey, oh, maybe we'll be doing a podcasting reviewing drone racing and in the future, right? It's also nice to know that Aaron out there in the chat room may be picking up a mirror soon. Yeah. Ooh, I think it's going in my Amazon cart as well. So yes, yes, yes. I mean, like you, you kind of you kind of put us all on to that. One. <laughs> yeah, so. it's, it's, it's wonderful. Awesome. And there goes a hundred bucks. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Awesome. Uh, well, hey, Brian, uh, so uh, tell us a little bit about, uh, you know, there's been some changes yeah, over yeah. at the studio. And I, like I said, I, I did the tour uh, a little bit ago, but w- what's going on? Yeah, so the uh, old building caught on fire. Oh, and- this that's... <laughs> We didn't do that to the old studio, but no, uh, <laughs> we didn't do that. But we, you know, we ended up in a much better position. the uh, The next day, Mike Speranzo, who is one of the uh, the owners of Mister Small's Theater, shot me a message and he said, "Hey, can you call me?" So I did, and he wanted us to move there, and mm-hmm. uh, we moved to a space now, which is is fantastic. We have a, a custom studio desk for our guests. We have a we're using well we, we started experimenting with green screen technology before we moved to the new space but now we're making it part of our, our regular thing and we have uh, the green screen actually framed into the wall and it, the back it's interesting and, the way you're using that too you know so mm-hmm, it's, 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 it, yeah, I, I like that I like that little bit of experimentation that's happening there well it's great too because like w- one thing that we're able to do with it which is cool is uh, on my show which is Mondays at 10 a.m. we tell three weird stories where we keep the Mon Monster at bay and I, I single handedly save the city of Pittsburgh 
Pittsburgh from total destruction. And uh, one week, one of the weird stories was this NASA engineer who invented the world's largest super soaker. And we were able to play the YouTube video behind me while I was talking about the super soaker and people could actually see the super soaker spraying through glass because it like goes at such high speeds and high velocity. Uh, so that was pretty cool. Uh, we also now have a control room and a live band performance room and eventually we'll have the entire studio wired through this control room where the producer will or the engineer and producer will sit and we'll be able to take live phone calls and everything else. So it's really a, an awesome space. We uh, are overlooking the courtyard. We, we may not get this awesome view of the tea, but we do get an awesome view of the courtyard at Mr. Yeah, Smalls, which is where a That's, lot of conversations... You don't got the sweet IGA going on in our view. That's yeah. for sure. <laughs> You're going to get again, people watch the taco stand like what we got. Yeah, you got but, more pe people watching here. But uh, for me, being able to overlook that courtyard is really pretty special because a lot of decisions in the music scene happen right in that courtyard. So it's really an awesome spot. And uh, I'm really excited once we get the, the wiring all done. And we're, we're kind of in a position where, where you guys are, where you're still moving things around. You mentioned about bringing the, the brick wall down uh, here to the studio. We're still looking to... The debate over the brick wall is still at hand. Still at hand. But, uh, has yeah. to happen. But, uh, but yeah, so we are... Um, still doing things uh, with, with our own studio. We're going to be adding more webcams, and we're also, once those lines run through the floor, uh, we'll be able, when we're able to control everything that control room, you'll see a lot more live band performances on, uh, mm -hmm. be able to see and listen uh, via the radio network or via the video. Uh, so we're really excited and about that. And I gotta that. say, like, you, know, you guys are doing a lot of stuff with with Facebook Live, obviously, and, uh, mm -hmm. and obviously we are too, but again, the audio has to come first, because you guys are radio, you guys are doing radio. Exactly. You know, yeah. So, um, you know, it, it's it, these are nice bells and whistles, but you know that audio has to be first. You know, mm -hmm. and uh, you know, I feel like we're in an okay spot here, and despite my weird lighting and shadow going on, but uh, <laughs> you know, it's kind of a reset button for for those kinds of things. So, and it's it's looking good. It's sounding real good, and and like I said, awesome looking space, and it's great. I love that you guys are part of that community and that uh, massive growing complex that is the Mr. Small's Fun House and Theater and and everything like that. I've seen a lot of great great shows there over the years uh participated in a couple interviews backstage with uh, uh my friends at uh, empire extreme uh back in the day nice. and uh it, it's cool to see you know you guys occupying a piece of that cool. history now have you ever been in the actual fun house so, so a couple awesome cool things about this spot the, the fun house is their second venue yeah they actually now have three venues there yeah. or they or yeah. they will but the second venue they opened the fun house 175 seated uh space which by the way for the music festival we crammed 400 into that room but they are eventually going to be wiring that through our control room and we'll be able to live stream that stage from our space and uh, they're also working on putting a splitter in where they'll be able across all of the bars wherever there's tvs in the building they'll be able to switch between the different stages and our actual studio as well so mm -hmm. we could do possibly have an interview with somebody before they go up on uh, on stage and actually if you scroll down on the end of uh, the mr smalls page this is kind of exciting right here in the footer Oh, 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 what is this? See right there. I, I have an outdated browser, but look, there's a River's Edge player. You can there play right there. Look at that. Right there. So There you go. Very cool. So, yeah, that, that's going to be that's a nice feature as well, because then anybody who's going to uh, look up tickets at Mr. Smalls, which is among the, if not the best, you know, one of the one of the best. There's there's a, several very great music venues in, in the there's city of Pittsburgh, but best, this, is, best this is one of the, the best. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, for the size, I, I would say, you know, I, I would take Mr. Smalls over stage AE any mm -hmm. day. So um, I, I love it there. It's been kind of my home. It's funny, before we even moved there, I knew where many of the the different, I don't know, different, uh, I, I don't want to say secret passages, but the, you know, the different ways in and out of places. And uh, so it's always kind of been my home. And now I basically do live there. So. Absolutely. I mean, it, it is pretty incredible because this is a place that, you know, it was an old church and it was converted and, and, and which makes it an awesome space to begin with. Plus music professionals applied their craft to making this space too. And what they oh, wanted. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. And, Mike Spranzo, he's been involved in many great, amazing bands uh, right now. He's uh, uh, he's in Drowning Clowns. Uh, Liz Berlin, she's a name that's known across the world with Rusted Root. And mm -hmm. she's also involved in, in several other great bands herself. So uh, these people do know what they're doing. And, 
And it's really, it's, I, I think that, I, I've often called it the, the heart of the music scene right there. So we're happy to be in that space. And, and I just, yeah, I love Mr. Smalls. It's been, I, I didn't realize this because the culture there is so great, but they just had their one year anniversary party for the Fun House. And I didn't realize that we at the River's Edge had actually existed longer than the Fun House. And I had been going there from the very beginning, but the culture and the, the community of musicians that have been going there, it's such a tight knit and awesome community that it felt like that venue had been open for forever. So. Awesome. Well, go check it out. River's Edge, PGH.com. Get the live stream. It's also on TuneIn if you want to listen to it in your car, on your phone, on your Chromecast, however that you like to do that. And it's great local music and uh, a lot of great uh, talk shows there as well uh, in the in the mornings and the weekend for the most part. Right? Be, yeah, yeah. The mornings, uh, all, always in the morning before all shows end by noon. But uh, also just wait within a week, a few weeks, probably we'll be revamping our website as well. So you there have you that go. to look forward there to. There you go. Look out, Clear Channel. That's because, right. Oops. <laughs> that's a feature that's not ready yet. Uh <laughs> <laughs> look out look out because here the, here comes a river's edge so thank you so much check him out brian crawford river's edge pgh.com john to he's at chilla on the twitter chillatech.net mm-hmm. and check out his awesome tips over on our youtube and our facebook page a lot of great stuff and uh, i know we're due to record a little bit more we're gonna have to get scheduled here oh definitely definitely especially as ios 11 launches and potentially the samsung galaxy note 8 um We'll definitely have to do some recordings with those devices. Awesome. So go check those out. Give us some feedback on that. Please support us on patreon.com slash awesomecast. Thank you to our awesome audience. Thank you to our awesome chat room. Have an awesome week. This show is a member of the Sorgatron Media Podcast Network. Find out more at sorgatronmedia.com.